I, I really don't know how I'm supposed to feel about this. Get the reveal and the kill onto the tree and protector. They, we haven't talked about attack. this, but tree and protector introduces just this Absolutely very unique nothing. element that chip damage on towers Ready isn't to a thing anymore, towers. right? You have to hard commit. We'll see how OG is able to work around that idea as they are full committing to this tier one at bottom lane, it looks like Navi. It's not going to rotate There's to try and defend. The thing about it is if you get all the tier ones out of the way Radiant early on, you neuter a lot of the tree. Strength. You make it really hard for him to uh, participate in fights. He feels like Night Stalker in that regard. Tree actually just wants to slow down the pace of the game and be really annoying in lane. Uh, and then set up around the map. Like the hero feels very slow. They're trying to protect the ward and they will manage to do it. Jerex tries to retreat, but it's met by Sineko dying. That is one of my favorite chat one life, by the way. Dyer's power is feeling your team. mortality. Yeah. I like how you thought about saying it. Yeah, I was like, I, I can't. Radiant structures are fortified. They require time. Navi not going to slow down here. They're going to go for another smoke. With Lizzie. Seeing if they can get a duel somewhere here. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh my. It well, Jarek's trying to real hard to pull the uh, damage off the tower. They can manage to get the entrance. The smoke doesn't quite go their way, though. The media silence onto the... Uh, they're going to save him long enough to be able to get the goal. Looks like it. Still goes down. That should be a win. Or maybe, maybe they're going to be able to catch him as well. The Primal Roar actually going down right as he gets bonked on the head and rooted up. But they don't have any follow-up disables. Now the Spectre actually popping his ultimate to be able to help get the kill on a Magical. We'll jump over to where Blizzy's at. Away from the tree. Should just going to go to the bottom half of the map. They got to deal with mid lane. Mid lane's taking a lot of damage right now for Siege Cream. They want to be able to save this, but uh, no levels of living armor anyway. OG doing everything they can to be able to force this tower down right now, and they should be able to do it. Their word is if the tree does have a living armor. Only catching Jarex, who's already got the avalanche out. Blizzy does not have to pull up just yet. He's going to be bombed again. The Ink Swell is going to protect him, though, especially against a Zeus. Double lightning bolts is pretty scary to play aggressive into, so they back up. Navi continue to lose more and more map control. And he did commit for the travels. Uh, pretty curious build. No Asian lens. No force, just straight up uh, travel to the point. I think I sort of understand it. Like you're playing around your mobility anyways on a hero like Zeus and travels solves a lot of your mana problems. Yep. So you're able to just like refill constantly. Yes. Um, and it probably helps your position fights a ton. When I was playing the the four position Zeus, things well on the Anna. I, 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 I stunned another dagger on a crystal this build. But I did try and get the boots of travel as soon as I could after the Icon of Scepter. I was gonna lie. Because it like, feels so good. I was like, you, you played a four Zeus and you brush travels? That is just messed up. But it is multiple null talismans, maybe an ether lens, Aghanim Scepter into boot. Can I just think, am I going crazy here? Or is there any, I was thinking of some crazy mechanic in Dota last night when I was kind of tired. Would there be any, I, I don't even want to voice it. I'm stupid like that. Dang, dang, you can't, dang, you can't leave this on a cliffhanger now. Is there any strategic, uh, strategic advantage to denying your own boards? Like if you could just roll the enemy team's bosses and you deny it yourself? <laughs> so you want to be able to deny boards in 100%. It's like Thompson, he tries to go for the ultimate duel going up. Finally, it does go down. Magical's going to try and finish up that damage with the Nether Toxin. Not enough to get the duel, but they will get the kill. But Jerex is already joined no tail here in this river area. And they're going to try and catch at least one of these here. It's going to be Blizzy. He's going to be, oh, the blink away right before the avalanche runs through the tier one tower. OG fail to get the kill. And they did manage to get the train protector at bottom lane, but honestly, that kill onto, uh, onto the Zeus is much larger. Red like a bird. Absolutely perfect. Man, if Thompson had just popped that, his old. not in my nature. Yeah, but... one or two seconds earlier, he gets the read on where the smoke is, is coming his way, then he could have dodged that gank, but... Sadly, 
His spider senses were just a little bit too slow there. But the thing about that gank, though, is I don't think it progresses the game as much as you True. would hope. Yeah. Because you're not able to take a tower behind it. Uh, and so Navi has to just reset and go back into farming. And they always have to use the smoke for these ganks because the combination of the Hawks and the Thunder God's Wrath, like, yes. you're going to know where Navi is all the time. And the fact that uh, you lost your mid-tier one tower without taking Paris. The vision yeah. game is heavily slanted in OG's favor. Not to say that this game is over or anything. It's not even close to the same situation as last game was. Navi's in a much better spot. It just means you want to continue to pressure because you're against the Zeus Spectre, right? Yeah. Like, you don't want to stop this level of aggression, but at the same time, you don't want to have to blow a smoke every single time to get that, uh, to get that done. Nine to nine. Only a 500 gold lead for OG right now. Around a thousand experience. So, as you said, definitely a very different situation from last game where we were around this point where OG was just clearly dominating in net worth on top of the map control they had. This time around, Crystallize is Dyer's still keeping a nice lead in net worth over no everybody else. He's just picked up an Echo Saber. is going to go for an aggressive build. He's going to go Blink Dagger as his next item. So he is going to try and start some fights for Nami. Now the Thunder God's Wrath reveals some positioning. They had Zayek, who was trying to get behind Anna. But the Thunder God's Wrath gave him the heads up, and he got the dagger. And away he went. That just as easily could have been Zayek finding him with the nature's guys. And then they would just chase the bottom tower. Hopes for a... Fortunately, the spectral dagger gets him Dyer's away to safety. Tower has Still will take that tier one on the offlane tower. There's a heavy push coming in from Seb on Dyer's the other side. Tower is under Seb attack. did decide to go for the Necro 3. I think mainly because he is against Zayek. Zayek setting up for They do have to get the duel. What a big one. Tops in. Way too close to the tier two tower. That's Blink after a TP is able to find that kill. Now Crystallize going for no tail, trying to kill before the East Well pops, and surely he does. They're gonna keep that tower alive, see if they can grab anybody else, but it looks like Seb is probably too far away. They'll kill the zoo that he's put together, though. Necronomicon 2, you were talking about how his item builds are nice and easy to pick up with a lot of people going Vlad's into Solar Crest, but this is still an old school Seb Beastmaster. He's going straight to Necrobook 3. Yeah, I think mainly because of the tree. Yeah, Radiant you're trying to solidify your vision advantage, and the fact is playing against tree is pretty important. You don't want to always it. have to just like continuously chop down trees or anything like that. And it's such an easy way to pressure into the Spectre too. Zayek quickly runs away from Magical, making sure that the two of them don't get caught. Magical may still be caught here because Jarex is just about to cut him off with an avalanche leading things off. There's a toss. Seb, is he close enough? He strikes to close enough, and Seb, he finally gets some toss range. Primal Roar to follow it up. These guys are sick good at getting last hits. Yes, even the uh, Spectre, Ilu Haunt, was able to get the last hit uh, on the prior kill. Now the Blink Dagger is up on Thompson, so with his Boots of Travel build, he's going to be all over the map, and he'll have the mobility for team fights to back it up. And that's the Blink Dagger, uh, the Blink Dagger picked up. Crystallizes another smoke being blown, but sadly this time around it's only for the five position, and Zeb still managed to take that tower. That's not going to feel good. You had to know no tail was dead. All right, well, that's two kills and a successful duel for Blizzy. That's not terrible. Not at all. They got to be out of smokes, though. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, they've been going through so many smokes just to make any moves they can against this Hawk plus Thunder God's Wrath that they're just not going to have a whole lot to work with at 25, 30 minutes. I mean, in an ideal situation there, you're able to, like, get a kill deeper in, place a ward into the jungle, and pressure the Spectre, which is really what they want to do, is pressure the Spectre as much as possible. It always feels as though what OG's strategy is, is especially in the draft, I think they want to checkmate teams into the late game. It's going to be like, a really big cool. He's gonna get dueled up and magical there with another toxin as well as a rod of to follow it up. Again, they don't need the dual kill on some of these big cores that they're getting between Thompson and Anna. 
Oh, look at this. Get the point. Middle tower is under attack. Oh, no but I do think that they try to put teams under the gun by yeah. picking heroes uh, like the Arc Warden or the Spectre. So that the enemy team feels like they have to make moves to like, win the game. Whereas OG, even though they do that, if they get a lead in the laning phase, they're still willing to play really aggressive. Just because they have a late game doesn't mean they want to go late game. So there's always that like backup option. Yeah. Dying trying to get in position there for the overgrowth. He's going to be saved by Slave's Commander. Man, it's gone. Sure enough, he does take, but crystallized to from all Thompson only needs one big swing. And uh, he's actually going to come back into the fight with the Haunt. Magical's quite low as well. Wanted to be able to stay around his nether toxins, but Thompson won't allow it. He'll just kite him around until the lightning bolt finishes him off. They are going to find the majority of the cores there. The Legion does manage to barely get out of that position. And they're just looking I mean, they were beating their heads to take this mid-tower. They do eventually do so, so I'm sort of okay with that. I'm always all right with deaths that lead to towers. Okay, personally. Um, it looked like a much better situation than it was for the Sven to jump into. Yeah. But of course, there's going to be just so much, uh, so many abilities at range that OG can fire off, and they don't have to hard commit to anything. They can uh, sort of test the waters with a lot of these spells. They've got the bolts, they've got the ulti from the Zeus, they've got the Spectre Haunt. That's the other thing that Spectre plus Zeus is such a good combo at. Like, they scout for each other. Tubs it! Ooh, a short blink away! A little short hop! And Blizzy! He's fast, man. He's so fast, actually. You're not getting him. This can't be good. Magical thought maybe he can get him with a long-range Rod of Atos, but he got great reaction there from Thompson. He shouldn't have didn't need to do quite a short blink, but any kind of blink under that pressure was good enough. They will be able to find no tail in mid lane, though. He was trying to push that in with the stroke of fate. Spotted, killed. 18 to 14, then net worth advantage. Hopping around between the two teams. But there is now the Radiant Spectre. So she has been outclassed against the Sven when it comes to farming speed. That's pretty natural. But now that she's got the Radiance, it's looking a bit easier for her. She's not as far behind as I think she should be. Yes. Yeah, I think this is relatively, uh, like, well within Thunder the Thunder spat him and immediately tops in with Jarex. Both jump forward. They'll be able to kill that tree protector. Nice. I think normally because Sven has such a good flash farm mechanic, he's normally up like 3, 4k. Yeah. Why do you think that Mana has been managed to like pretty close? Uh, I think he's just been a part of a lot of fights. Yeah. That helps quite a bit. He is 2, 1, and 5. High value priority targets. Plus, uh, the Sven dying in that position where Anna was the direct recipient of that as magical. Will end up dying. Blizzy spotted by the Thunderbolts as well. Not going to be able to blink right away. Shouldn't be any danger, but there's certainly nothing that Navi can do but run. Crystallize. Blink from Blink. Jarex managed to dodge that stun. Like oh, that was neat. Thompson will be able to get the vision with the Thunderbolt, meaning Crystallize cannot get away from this no matter how fast he is. This combination of a global map movement and superior vision makes this Blink Dagger look super sick. I like this build a lot from Thompson. The move speed is the Blink Dagger. It makes sense because normally on Zeus you want some sort of like defensive item potentially. Yep. But your defense is the fact that your team's able to play this kind of offense. Yeah. The sort of blitzing style where you're able to just like consistently uh, apply pressure through vision alone. Yeah. And that's why vision is the most, it's the most important aspect of Dota. Uh, I wish there was like more warding guides and stuff too for like newer players uh -huh. to understand like vision makes it so easy for your team to play. If you could see them and they can't see you, uh, maybe at like the lower brackets, it doesn't matter as much because I don't know if they're utilizing vision, mm -hmm. but at least like from what I've seen in like 3K and up or whatever, uh, vision is all that matters. Radiance Middle Tower and it's so hard to understand that until uh, you play in like 50 games in a row where you just get out visioned. You never know what the enemy team is doing. You feel like you're always under pressure. Uh, wherever you walk, it feels unsafe. That's funny. Navi were the ones who took the first step 
in this game to try and secure the uh, the vision advantage with this train protector pick, but OG came right back with his Beastmaster and it was looking like a uh, not just a superior Beastmaster, a superior Spectre. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There is. He's been quite the answer to the tree, too. He's been spotted so many times from the Thunder God's Wrath. When you already have so much vision from the Hawk, it becomes so obvious when the enemy team is making some sort of smoke move. Oh, yeah, for sure. That he's like, he always is able to find good Thunder God's Wrath timing. Whereas normal games, it's like, you have to. Like, it, there's usually not enough information for you to deduce. You're just guessing. Yeah, you're just kind of guessing. You're just doing it a little bit of feel. But this, this is super easy. Magical. Making the arrow, saying they're trying to rotate through right now. Into our triangle. And Jarex was trying to get some sort of positioning going there. Crystallized. Blinking very far forward. Into no tail he goes. And quickly chops him and Twain. That will be one pickup at least. But Crystallized not able to get away very quickly. And Thompson using his advantage, his long cast range advantage, to put Crystallized under a bit of pressure there. But OG, no better than to try and go for that. What? I could easily see... No, I He's thinking about it. Jerex, don't do this. Like, do you're Jarek's gonna try to burst him, but he'll get PKB off and kill you. Yeah. That is a 1600 HP spin that is rapidly regenerating from this living armor. Speaking of which, what's he going for next? He got his Blink Dagger, BKB, and now he's gonna go for the Bloodthorn bit. Radiance Courier has been slain. I like a lot against a these specters. Courier. Courier have anything on it? Regeneration. So they're just gonna have to leave their ancient apparition behind. That was a lot of ulties, though. Yes. If you're not used, you're looking to uh, engage off of this. But OG, they don't feel too terrible because now they've got another card up their sleeve that is going to be the Nimbus available for Thompson. I don't think they should run out. I think they're trying to go for the battle. Always gonna fight you in that position. You use so many ulties. Yeah. And that's OG. They did it in the previous game too, where they feel like they've got the advantage uh, because of pure net worth. But spells mean Dyer's so much in Dota. Tower yeah. is that's all attack. it is. All you killed was an ancient apparition. It was not gonna take that long for Navi to heal and been get been back to that tier two. His buyback like super cool. Yeah. And he just like completely two point mercy. In that position, uh, maybe if you have at least like one spell up, as we see. Uh -huh. That double Yule was sick, but it was. Crystallize had a lot of damage to throw in. The Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, all I needed to do was clip him. I mean, you're let's be real, this was the ideal looking fight for them. They're gonna go back in, actually. Time and pass the tier two to be able to kill No Tail. Make sure that he can't stroke a fate the upcoming creep wave and slow down these pushes. Yeah, this is the kind of aggression that uh, we were hoping to see from Navi. It's there, they went for that play. Uh, they read the situation. And I think once you have this kind of uh, strategy set up by OG, once you lose the map control, it starts going really bad. Because now Thompson's not going to play with the same kind of impunity he was doing Dyer's before, where they had the better map control and they have the hogs out, the Thunder Gods map timings. But that is such a rough way to uh, lose that fight, because all they had to do at that point was just back and reset after they killed the AA. And I think it's fine. Oh, oh, it's getting the duel, old. but Thompson just picture perfect timing on that lightning bolt. And look at Blink over into the high ground. They're going to be able to get Primal Roar. Blizzy, low. There's going to be Mech as well as the Overgrowth, but Blizzy's going to be left behind. It's Thompson. 
Beautiful positioning there. Just read that very nicely. I will say his reaction time is incredible. Yes. That was, that was so well done as uh, they know that Science is in here and the Sentry Ward is near him as well as the Hawks coming through. So he's going to go for the full retreat. Ice Blast headed towards Roshan. Gets a vision in there. They will just hit the Spectre, clipping No Tail as well. Oh, top dropping the Nimbus Cloud in here. Keep vision of Rosh, Navi. I think they're more than happy just to be able to push OG out and uh, give themselves enough time for the two to come back. DD. There's no, there's no rune that says force Roshan, then double damage rune. It's and whispering to you, Crystallize, and take it. The Nimbus is gone now. Hold your destiny in your hands. Play for the win here, Navi. All right, he's gonna activate the God Strength and just go for it. OG, are they gonna wise up to this? They're gonna throw the Nimbus over there. They finally do, but it may be a little bit too late. It's at 3,500 HP and OG are trying to get there fast enough, but it doesn't look like it. It's gonna fall, Zyx is already positioning himself to try and find some sort of takeoff on the beginning that they're gonna be able to go for the Tiny. They have the duel to be able to follow it up. Lizzy managed to lock him down. The Ice Blast is on its way. It's actually gonna go a little bit farther. It's gonna hit Aisha because they got the hit. Coming out from the spin and Anna. Way too close to that engagement. Dude, he was rubbernecking that he wanted to see what was gonna happen. Yeah. And Thompson's gonna be found as well. What a fast rotation from Zion. What a massive turnaround from a double damage rune into a successful Roshan. Now two core pickoffs, the Spectre and the Zeus going down. It all starts with Navi deciding to come into that area anyways. They get control of it, Crystallize finds the DD, mm -hmm. but it's Zayats that already has the high ground area caught up. And Anna just decided to hang around. Yeah. He gets caught incidentally. He wasn't even, you know, he wasn't even the main person they were trying to kill. I think he just wanted to see if it was a solo tree. Which of course it's not, because they just took Roshan. Yeah. They gave you the info for free. And now all of a sudden, Navi in a great position. I love that Snake made like the instant read of like, they don't need my Ice Blast for this dual kill. Let's keep it going. Yeah. And see if I find somebody else. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. That was so well done. And that'll be a melee barracks. Possibly more here. Navi really gonna see if they can force OG to buy back or maybe try and do some half hearted defense and lead to the kill. The whole battle war, but immediately jump board from Zion to table, get the overgrowth. And Inkswell on Jerry's gonna try and jump in and continue this sheet setting, but they really just don't have any damage back it up. The support are gonna fall gears. Crystallize using his BKB to finish him off. Blinks back to the safety. They're still gonna go for this around the melee barracks, but Thompson is up in five seconds and Navi stuck around a little bit too long because now they can't get away too easily but unless they go in and actually kill out this Spectre they're going to be able to get the duel on him looks like that is going to be enough Spectre immediately buying back though haunting in wants to be able to find some extra kills magical he's going to be left to slow down the rest of OG he's saying me and Zions will hold OG back while the rest of you get away forcing a buyback out of the hard carry that's good enough for me and he's going to BKB <laughs> and go for it BKB and does he not have a TP? No, he's just gonna all have the map to be able to get the bears. <laughs> if he had a TP, then that would've been a boss. Yeah. But because he has the level 20 talent, the poison attack affecting the tower meant that he could get some permanent damage on OG at least. Oh, that was a sequence of events and a half. Yes. Very well done by Navi. We said both teams rely on momentum. OG tried to push their luck a little bit too much, and Navi, they definitely capitalized here. They played that so well. Uh, it's those little reads, like you said, the AA Ice Blast continuing to linger. Zayat's already walking onto that high ground, assuming that uh, OG was gonna mount the defense too late off of the Nimbus Cloud. Mm -hmm. That's not luck at all. That's just them playing things well. They made the little maneuvers that you don't really think about uh, that just led to these overwhelming snowball opportunities. All of a sudden, they're up 6k, they're up two sets of racks, they're in a winning position. Absolutely, they've got 100 dual damage on this Legion Commander, so they're looking at like a team that can really contest Spectre for late game as well. If this game stalls out for another 20 minutes, I don't think they're going to be too far out of their comfort zone.
because these heroes all scale relatively well. It'd be better for them, of course, to be able to just lock down this second Roshan that's going to spawn in uh, a bit of time and finish it off Radiant's with that Aegis and Chase. Under but attack. It will fall see if OG allows them that opportunity. At least we get a hype game, uh, game two. Yeah, certainly. We're closing in on some level 25 talents as well. Thompson already has his with big arc lightning increase in damage. Bottom tower is Such a massive fast. one. 35 minute body runes. And you get three for the side of OG. Even in a losing game, you can see they, they understand that their game plan is entirely on map control, and even though they lost two lanes of racks, they come back, they immediately push out and try and get some map control. Again. And that's the benefit of having that travel zone. Is, uh, you know, it continues to allow you to push out the lanes. Yeah. You've got these, like, the entire zoo that comes out from Seb, he can just run down lanes, doesn't even need his hero there necessarily to do that. The Zeus can throw out his Nimbus Cloud to be able to, to push in some of these side lanes as well. There's a lot of these uh, low-risk pushing that OG has. They're going to pop out the Thunder God's Wrath. That's going to give Anna the heads up that something was coming his way. TP out before Crystal Eyes can find him anyway. I foresee the Radiant's top tower falling shortly. And they had all that information. Hey, they're all bottom. Keep that push coming at the top lane. And the Necronomicon combined with the Inner Beast. As well as the double siege wagon. And is making short work of that tier two. But Navi refusing to back up. Continue the march forward. Now invading the Dire Triangle. Trying to find somebody. They're going to come home empty handed. I think they just want to continue to get map control so that they can uh, set up for the next Roche. Yeah. You grab this tier two. I think you commit for this tier two. No, they're gonna back Dyer's out. Well, they do manage attack. to get the pick off on set here. Under so I think that's part of the reason that Nami started back up, because just in case, like, oh, look at this move. Beastmaster had more, but they immediately go, okay, we got the kill on Beastmaster. We didn't try to go for the team fight, so we can go back to this bottom tier two. Give the dual damage and hit that tier two. With an extra 126 bonus damage. I like that move though. What they were going for is they leave three heroes on the other side of the map. So then OG feels very confident. They're thinking to themselves, ah, they went back already. There's no way they, they risk any sort of uh, three on five potential fight, right? Yeah. And so if you're OG, you relax a little. Now they've gotten that tier two and the shrine. You can get the other shrine before Roshan spawns. It's going to be very tough for OG to get close to that Roshan pit when the time is right. Level 25 almost there for the Viper. Do you still go the Nether Toxin Silences? Or uh, 160 damage, man. The Nether Toxin, the nether toxin damage, or Silences is so good, though. Yeah. It's really hard to justify not to get it. And that is indeed what he's going to go for. Dude, it's so annoying to fight into that. Yep. You see this nether toxin in the ground, you think, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Walk into it, get silenced. Silenced and healing the viper because of the spell lifesteal. Why is it called nether toxin? Because it's uh, from, he's, uh, he's Pugna's pet. Oh, really? Yeah. And so he's, that's the, that's the whole nether, nether realm in action. It's Pugna's pet? One night, yeah. twice the damage. So like the lore, Pugna's real strong? There's, oh! <laughs> Again, the fast reactions from everybody on OG. The blink back from Jerex, the instant Nimbus from uh, Thompson Zeus, preventing any aggressive blinks from Na'Vi. But just being able to survive isn't going to win you this Roshan. And that was the Nimbus drop too. Can't get too aggressive. They have to wait for the Nimbus back up in 10 seconds, but they also have to find a way. Do you think they have to start the fight or do they have to let Navi crash into them? I think they have to let uh, Navi crash into them. It's sort of difficult to say because uh, 
you know, if you lead the fight and Blizzy's in a good position, then the fight's ruined. The Beastmaster and most of your damage is just gonna get purged off plus the pipe. Yeah. I could very easily see a position where Navi just out they withstand the chip damage that uh that OG have. Because they don't have any like real strong like immediate burst one thousand HP gone. They need the yeah. ability to like lightning, lightning, lightning four times in a row. Radiant 31 to 24 as we approach the 40 minute no marker. Navi holding a 6,000 net worth lead. That's going to increase even more. If they can get the superior number of bounty runes, but if they don't, OG is going to get three once again. OG has I made a good point of, of getting those. But I think Navi, I mean, they're, they're at a point where they don't I have to risk a whole lot, right? Like, who cares if they actually get three bounties over two? Like, as long as we maintain control of this rope shot, yes. we get that Aegis and Cheese. What? I think it's game is... Okay, I think it's... <laughs> it's been 100% OG favored since the beginning. The BKB pop trying too. to get the ice blast in the BKB duel, but this is kind of gem. Yeah, oh, but crystallized fans make the entrance, but it's only going to be the great show that they find of that jump. They activate the BKB, and what OG wants here is just a kite. They've lost the Grim Stroke, but want to get out. He's being heavily used here. They can go back in as soon as they fade out, and that's exactly what they were trying to do, but unfortunately caught inside the river. The Spectre that dies is such a right weird position. There. That is definitely weird. That is OG overstretching their hand, trying too hard to catch people. Yeah, they were going for some sort of weird walk-off play. And look at Jerry, he's doing the same thing here, trying so hard to be able to catch somebody. He's now gonna get ice blasted, jump forward from the Viper. He spotted Thompson, gets the Nether Toxin on him with the duel as well. That's gonna be another buyback coming out from OG. Is Jerry's gonna fall as well? A third buyback already in this fight. And Navi, they have to use a hero. They do have the Spectre though. That Inkswell signing up is going to be able to get the Ancient Apparition. That gem on the deck as well with the tree. He can't make it up that cliff. That doesn't work anymore, so he's going to die as well. But no core is dead yet. He's going to be able to Manta take off that Rod of Atos. They make their way back. They're trying to catch Crystallize right now, and they spotted him. Jarex managed to get him with the blink combo. Stall him up as best as possible. Wait until your cores get here. They have the damage to be able to finish off Crystallize. And now it's Navi who may be forced into some buybacks of their own under the threat of Roshan, but the smoke up immediately from OG. Blizzy, whoa, he's just blinking straight forward the toss with the level 20 talent. Tosses him a little bit farther back, but fortunately he had the BKB, a BKB TP out. But he's not going to be able to TP into this fight. He's going to start booking it across the map to try and get to Roshan here. And he's just going to buy back. I feel like you buy back here. Well, Roshan's almost dead, so it doesn't look like they're going to make that commitment. Jared trying to get away. He'd already use his buyback. Now the Zed's going to go for it. But Roshan, it's almost dead. And Jared's managed to get away from that ice blast, so he doesn't die. They oh, get the Roshan. So they get the Aegis and Cheese. And it looks like a clean retreat from OG. I feel and like Blizzy failed to get the duel. And if Panic King Anna's going to go for it a little bit more. It's the Primal Roar. Just to get onto Blizzy. He slows down though, and he's trying to make his way over there, but they have Jared to be able to get the combo onto Blizzy. He's down to half health. The AoE press the attack. It's not going to be enough to say, but what a stun from Chris Lies hitting on the three, and he rips it apart. That is just a fight that pops in. He doesn't have a second line to work with, and they still have the God Drink, and they have a little bit of control as well. A lot of bit of control as the Rod of Atos holding him in place. The toss away. The, he has the stun though. The ice blast to follow it up. Can Jared do it again? No blink up for three seconds. Anna, if he dies here, this is going to be the game for OG. And sure enough, it is. They both die. Both Thompson and Anna, the carries of OG, both die and are dead for two minutes. And that leaves a wide open base for Navi to go ransack. I mean, somehow they're going to have to do this three on five. The three wave is already there, so there's no cream cutting tactics. As Dragon and Soul Bind, four staff down to the low ground. Just buy some time. Hope they separate. Hope Jarex is able to find an opportunity for a pick off here. And he's just going to try and cut the creep wave. That's what he was going for. But he's going to get stunned up. Into the ice blast. Into a duel. 178 bonus damage. That is what Leech Command is going to end with here. Unless Jarex can stun all things. There's no way. OG. They call it here. The series is going to end. One to one, Navi get their revenge from game one. Come back 
OG just enough, just enough mistakes were made by OG.